we have a, a Shesh here today who's going to talk to us not only about um, understanding debt, what debt is, um, but going into a little bit about how we can, we can manage that. Um, additionally, I will put our link to our one-on-one -on -one pro bono financial helpline in the chat. And um, again, we're thrilled to be able to present this to you. Uh, we do hope that you gain some knowledge today. And without further ado, we're gonna turn it over to Ashesh. Take it away. Thanks, Tracy. Thanks everyone. I'm really privileged uh, for your time and thank you for joining us for a great cause. I know when year ends, uh, you know, New Year starts, uh, two things on everyone's mind, actually health and wealth uh, for every New Year resolution. Most of us keep up with that, uh, but many of us not, uh, because sometimes it could be challenging. Sometimes the resources are not available. And most of the time, actually, uh, we are too afraid to ask questions because uh, we always think about how people will think about me, right? So session like this are really wonderful. We kind of like, you know, like, like minded people and we are trying to achieve the common goal and objective. So my name is Ashesh. I am financial advisor at PNC Investment. I worked in a banking industry for almost 25 years. Majority of my career was as a branch manager, where I helped uh, many, many you know, uh, customers, uh, thousands of customers for that uh, debt goals, financial goals, and financial planning needs. But today, we are just going to focus specifically on a, a debt part. And we can uh, do a future session if you want uh, for other knowledge base if you are interested. So let's understand the debt. First of all, the word debt, of course, you know, I see the uh, in the chat room, everybody has a uh, not so great or often experience uh, with the bills and the stress and the worries. And uh, of course, you know, I, and I felt the same way uh, until I kind of got my hands around that. So uh, let, let's see if we can understand the debt. Uh, there are, uh, first of all, why do we use the debt, right? So many times we realize that the debt can be you know, good way to facilitate our goals and dreams. And that's why I kind of like, you know, divided that in a two part, good debt and a not so good debt or a bad debt. What happens is, think about this. You wanted to go to school, you wanted to buy a car, you wanted to buy a house. Of course, not everyone has enough cash saved in their checking and a savings account. So at that point, having somewhat debt might help because that is considered as a good debt. Because if you go to school with the debt and you are able to produce an income or productivity, it is a good for yourself and good for the society. And of course, Uncle Sam makes a lot more tax revenue from that. So our future generation would have enough money uh, to depend upon for their social benefits, right? So good debts are there. Uh, and not so good that, of course, you know, sometime, you know, I know I have done that, you know, uh, probably more than enough time, just my uh, spending control. And I regret those after the word, uh, after those uh, decisions. But of course, we're going to cover that in a detail. So, uh, Tracy, may I ask you to please change the slide? Next one. Okay, so good debt, actually, uh, education loans, it will help individuals to produce more income uh, growth participation for the community tax base. How does that help? Of course, let's, let's consider that a person has an associate degree. The study states that uh, uh, more likely than they would make an average annual salary in current economy is about 50 to $60,000. Uh, the uh, people with a graduate degree uh, or undergrad degree, they would make between eighty to ninety thousand dollars, and then of course uh, to the uh, uh, grad degree uh, or one of those programs that would at least earn them one hundred and ten thousand or more uh, per year. So certainly, if the borrowing helps you and your family member to increase the uh, uh, you know the wealth that you are trying to gather i think that is a, one of the better choices that you would make home mortgages i understand that in the uh, last two years especially you know since pandemic started uh, most uh, people who live in a uh, rental properties they can attest to that uh, especially uh, uh, in a low income area the rental uh, rental cost went up uh, in the a range of about 20%. So, I mean, it's not helping because even if the in 
income increase, but the income is not keeping up with those costs, right? So many people are thinking, okay, if I'm paying maybe $1,500, maybe $1,800 a month uh, uh, to bring a, a roof over my family's head, why just not I consider as a, you know, buying a property? Well, that mortgage is one of the better solution because it helps you and your family to build equity in that property. And again, it increases the economic output. How and why? So anytime, it is a, a historical uh, uh, kind of a learning. Anytime somebody buys home, they usually invest a lot more money in a, a, a improvement if needed. It also helps uh, people buy more appliances, newer appliances, upgrade other things. Basically, it keeps money flowing in the economy and it keeps jobs flowing in the economy too. So home mortgages are also one of the better debt as long as they are not used for other purpose. So uh, of course, you know, sometimes we do take a home equity line of credit and use those funds. And I'll share a, an example later on, which is relevant to current uh, timing. Uh, and vehicle loans. Uh, I mean, again, it's if it's done properly, uh, these vehicle loans are a great tool. Why? Because it takes an individual from to and from work, and that will help them, you know, do their work efficiently, take care of family, especially if you have to pick up kids after their school activity and run uh, back to, you know, work or whatever we have to do. I think, you know, uh, those kind of loans are really, really good choices and scenarios uh, to uh, help us uh, improve our lifestyle and uh, making quality of life. Um, if any of you have any questions from everything and anything I'm talking, please continue to add uh, you know, uh, in the chat room. So we will uh, address every question that you have uh, towards the end of our conversation. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, What's, what is not so good that? Of course, credit card borrowing on top of the list, personal loans in most cases, vehicle loans, again, if it's done without planning and any borrowing that is not, it only used for pleasure. So credit card borrowing, <clears throat> why did I put on top of this? Because if you re recall, uh, if any of you are paying attention, uh, uh, I mean, between uh, March of last year until now, including today, the Federal Reserve Banking System increased their uh, short-term rates by almost 5%. So if your average credit card uh, rate was, let's say, 18% at that time, probably today it is 23%. Uh, and we have a scenario later on in one of the slides, actually, how is, is that going to impact you by increasing that 5% of a rate? But uh, what happens is uh, this kind of a uncontrolled rate where once you borrow money you have no control over that that is one of the most dangerous way and that's not going to help you in a long term uh, kind of a cash flow planning because majority of your bills uh, are uh, probably going to eat up all your you know non discretionary income Personal loans. Uh, personal loans in most cases are not so good unless it is used for a specific reason. And we're gonna talk about that also in a moment. But if the personal loan is used for a vacation purpose or something that is uh, that can wait, I think that may not be one of the best choices. Why? Again, uh, personal loan rates have gone up uh, working in a bank. I can attest to that. Uh, at some point uh, about two years ago, we had uh, people borrowing money as a personal loan, uh, probably under 6%. Today, the same exact transaction would cost them about 12% because cost of borrowing money has gone up. Vehicle loans, if it's done without planning, why? Because think about this, when you are ready to buy a vehicle, there are many, many options available. You could have borrowed money from your personal bank, wherever you have a banking relationship, that could be one of the better choices because they know that you, know, you have a relationship and they might be able to assist you with your immediate need. More importantly, and I'm not sure if you, any of you have experienced this, but many times, if you are trying to buy a newer vehicle, uh, those manufacturers have an incentive to lend you money so they can sell their vehicle to you. Uh, uh, in a current scenario, I have so, uh, uh, seen uh, one of the manufacturer uh, offering like a 2.99% uh, vehicle loan uh, if you buy a specific type of the vehicle as a newer vehicle. 
However, the same exact transaction at my bank would cost the same customer with the exactly same credit rating about six and a half percent. So if you can see, actually, there is a three and a half percent premium to pay if you go to bank versus you go to the manufacturer. So please do your homework, work around the, uh, like, you know, different choices. If not, talk to your banker. They are one of the best guides that you can have. Uh, if you have accounts with a credit union, they are also one of the better choices because credit unions are most of them are nonprofit. That means they only work for members benefit. So you might get actually better choices going in the credit union, but wherever you have a long-term financial relationship, those are the places probably gonna help you better. And again, any borrowing that is used for pleasure without having a specific plan for repayment. So if you need to borrow money for two year term for a specific project, because you know uh, something needed to be done in a bathroom or kitchen, remodeling of part of the house, I mean, as long as you have a plan behind that and you know you have extra cash flow to pay this off in next year or two year or five years, I think that borrowing is good. But anything that has no plan, that is not one of the better scenario because that's going to take forever and ever to pay off those borrowing. Uh, Tracy, next slide, please. Okay, so what is the impact on household finances? So, uh, First of all, financial stress is one of the largest contributor uh, for mental and physical health issues. As a fact of matter, actually, uh, uh, the physical health and mental health is caused by none other than the money. Uh, uh, negative cash flow sometime and many times actually can also add more burden on a family life. And of course, at the end, uh, your well-being is impacted. So, uh, I mean, if you, I mean, at the end of the day, all, all we wanted to do is take care of ourselves, take care of our families and be happy. But I think those kind of uh, like an unplanned uh, and bad debt can actually weigh in. And so, un unfortunately that will impact your long-term health. So uh, any of those things that if you ever experience, sometimes it's a good idea to speak with uh, the financial counselors one-on-one. -on -one. And of course your you know, uh, uh, medical provider too, because they might be able to guide you understanding your problem and finding a solution for you. May I have a next slide, please? Okay, so let's let's understand needs and wants. So I am sure I can. I'm the first one actually to say I go for shopping. I find uh, something that I love because it just looks so great, and I think I'm going to be ve looking very good into that. Uh, I don't look for any budgeting. I don't look for any planning. I just go for it, right? And I'm sure many of you can attest to that. I think that's where you know many of us have made mistakes. Now, of course, if it's a small things, uh, we always say, well, yeah, you know, only it's $50. It's not gonna matter much. It's not gonna break my bank. But of course, $50 happens probably a couple of times a, a month and it, it's a 12 month time frame. That's a $1,200 that could have at least paid for, you know, a few months of groceries. So keep that in mind, right? Depending upon your family size. So let's understand what are the two different spending, non-discretionary and discretionary. And I really hope at the end of conversation, many of you have an opportunity to kind of like, you know, take a piece of paper and a pen and just write two columns. And kind of this is a, one of the best way to manage your money budgeting process. Uh, so non-discretionary is something that you don't have a choice. You have to pay those bills. So if you uh, own a house and you have a mortgage, that's something you don't have a choice. You're going to pay that mortgage. If you rent, you don't have a choice. You have to pay that rent, right? You have to buy groceries that you don't have a choice. Also, you don't have a choice of your electric and a gas bill. So these are the non-discretionary spendings. If you make a list of those items that you must pay every month in order to continue living the lifestyle you choose, that would be on a non-discretionary spending. What leaves is a discretionary spending. So this is something that, okay, can I afford to go with my family or friends and just have you know, a few drinks or go to a dinner uh, or maybe actually one of those you know, football games that I'm intending to go. Uh, I mean, I know season is ending soon, but those are the things that are discretionary spending that we have a control over what we can and we can't do, right? So I think that's something I really want you to uh, pay attention to, stay focused. But if we don't write down those expenses, 
I think we're not going to be able to understand where we're going to have our uh, uh, discretionary spending. And more importantly, if you can go back in a time and just see your debit card transaction, credit card transaction, and see if you are able to find out those places that you spend money, was that really necessity or was that something that you did just to uh, uh, please yourself, right? I mean, short-term gain cannot work for a long-term happiness sometimes. So bottom line is planning is the key really the biggest key for your successful and stressful a uh, stress free financial future we, we really 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 have to stay focused on what exactly what we have in our control and how do we control after the fact may I please have a next slide please okay all right so i just did one slide just you know uh, to help us understand what will be the impact Let's assume now, of course, I don't buy a handbag for $400 because I don't have a need for a handbag. But if somebody in the group or somebody that you know have that urge to buy that they like, and let's assume that that costs $400 and a pair of jeans costs $100. Total money paid was $500. Yeah, I mean, for a short term, we might not think that, okay, yeah, 500 may not have an impact. But if you finance that, $500 at the 18%, which is no longer true for many, many of your card, right? The 18% is no longer there. If you look at your credit card statement, most of them are in a range of uh, 20 to 30% range in between. Anyway, and uh, if your mon uh, uh, monthly payments are done, minimum monthly payments, which is $15, it will take 47 months for you to pay off this uh, the fun items that you purchase. $500 will take 47 months and it will call additionally $199, which is actually you're paying 40% premium on $500 you borrowed temporarily just for feeling good. But same item, after two months, if you ask yourself, are we happy with the same item? Probably not because you moved on and also like, you know, people stop complimenting. So we are not happy about those choices we made. So I really think that it's important for us to budget and plan things properly, and that might help all of us actually do better financial decisions. Uh, next slide, please. So what are the options available? Of course, we all talk, I'm just keeping talk, talking about negatives and negatives. Let's, let's think about like, you know, what help we have, because there are some good positive. So let's understand that, okay, anything has been done, uh, until February 1st, 2023, it's done. You cannot undo it, right? What can we do to fix it? So let's talk about that. Well, first of all, when you have a moment, take a list of those credit cards that you have an outstanding balance, or if you are planning to keep at least outstanding balance uh, until further notice. If I were you, I would write down the name of the card, approximate interest rate that's showing on the statement, monthly minimum payment, and the total balancing outstanding. If you have a spreadsheet, that's even better. Why? Because it's gonna give you running total on the bottom. But what it will do, it will give you an idea, average interest rate paid and average monthly payment. So let's assume that there are three cards that you have, card one, two, and three, and all of them are uh, in the north of 20% interest rate. And if you have an outstanding balance uh, between three of them, let's say $5,000. It might be a smart idea for us to approach our bank or financial institution could be your uh, credit union and just talk to the banker and see if they have any option available that is less than 20% annual interest rate that you're gonna pay. And still, most of the time, you will see that the personal loans that we discussed a few minutes back, personal loans, most of them may range between 10 to 12% range, but they are still better because they are under 20%. So one thing for sure, it won't take 47 months for you to pay off that because most will have a like in a timeline. The, uh, uh, and if you choose 12 month, 24 month time frame, it's easy to work on those payments and get rid of that $5,000 in a debt than if you did not do that. So uh, maybe uh, help yourself talk to uh, uh, you know, your banker, schedule a conversation on their calendar by making an appointment and do the homework ahead of time, like making that list of the cards that you want to pay off or their personal loan. 
for any item that you have more than 12% in a monthly uh, annual pay, uh, uh, payment or 12% rate, I think those are the one that you should be thinking about getting rid of. Now, just don't get me wrong. I mean, these things will require still the cash flow, which is your current income and your uh, credit score. So those are still going to play in decision making but at least uh, that will be a great start if something needed to be done now that will be a good conversation starter now those who are homeowners this is one of the best solutions the home equity line of credit the heloc could be used as a secondary option why because heloc since it's secured against your primary or secondary residence right those rates are even lower than 12 percent they are in a single digit the best rate I have seen is around 7% annually. So instead of paying 20% on a credit card, wouldn't you pay just 7% annually on line of credit and create a payment plan and get it done and over with? Again, I'm not suggesting to keep those balancing hanging out there forever, but at least at some point, you will be able to done this sooner with those two options, either personal loan or a home equity line of credit, than if you don't choose any option. So not in action, I think it's not one of the best choices. Hopefully you work on your worksheet and hopefully you find out a, a great, great trusted partner and advisor either at bank or other places. May I have an next slide, please? Okay, now, yes, we are in debt and yes, all these things can happen at any given time. Some things we have a control over, some things we don't have a control over. If the car breaks down and you need to pay for that repair on your credit card, there is nothing you can do because well, guess what? You're gonna need that car to make money. So certainly those are the expenses you have to work, uh, be prepared for, right? Let's think about a scenario and I'll share an example. As a banker, when I was working with a client, a uh, client came to me and they were uh, uh, borrowing about $8,000 in a personal loan. And I asked, what's happening and they mentioned that they are taking their family uh, for a vacation in florida disneyland first time with four kids and of course you know the cost was for them uh, reasonable uh, but of course money wasn't uh, prepared for that so this is something I, I give an idea like you know assume a vacation for your family and i'm not talking about in upcoming vacation that's probably next month or next few months but let's think about uh, we can plan ahead in 2024 if you want to take your vac a vacation and that costs four thousand dollars assuming there are 26 paychecks that you have from your work if you divide that four thousand dollar needed with 26 paycheck if you are able to save 154 dollars per paycheck that will be the stress-free vacation. You don't have to do anything at the time of taking vacation because you already have accounted that money. So it simply takes one small step, plan, budget for that, and take an action. By what I mean by taking action, go to bank, open a savings account if you don't have one, and start automatic transfer. The day you get paid, bank will transfer automatically whatever amount you choose. Even if you don't do the $153 you can still do at least $100 or even less. But whatever money you can save, that will be the less money that you have to worry at the time of taking vacation. So that vacation that you enjoyed, when you come back from vacation, it shouldn't take 47 months and hundreds of extra dollars just to pay off that vacation debt. I really hope this makes sense. And more importantly, even if you have no plan for vacation, if you have no plan for anything else, as a financial advisor, this is I always preach about. Have a savings account somewhere and at least six months of your household expenses, which is non-discretionary expense. So that will be the mortgage payment, rent payment, uh, all utility bills, food bills, everything that you have planned for a, on a budget sheet, right? At least six months of those expenses should be saved in case of emergency. The job market is not turning out well. And many times we see headlines that hundreds and sometimes thousands of jobs are being eliminated. What are we gonna do for that, right? So at least we can be prepared if rough times are ahead. Now, this is good for single income household. Now, if you have a dual income household, at least you are in luck, but you should still save at least three months of your non-discretionary expenses, at least in those savings accounts. 
again, that will prepare you well, less stress. And le I mean, again, lesser financial stress is a happier family life. Because I know at some times, you know, the people who loved me most and I loved the most, I was more upset at them because of just financial stress. And I'm sure you can look back in a time and see that. Why did I do that? These are the people who are closest to me and I should not have done what I did, but I can't undo that. I learned from that and kind of help others learn from that too. So that, these are kind of like, you know, just a word of my wisdom. Uh, uh, I know I have two children and uh, sometime when they were young, I, I, I remember those days that I got just upset because of the money stress and I just, look back in time and uh, I mean, thank goodness they don't remember because they were too young, but I can't forget those days that I just got upset uh, to my two angels. Anyway, uh, may I have a next slide please? So this is my contact information. Uh, if you wanted to reach me directly, uh, my work email address is there. If you want to reach me directly, I can be reached also my personal email address. Uh, I would highly, highly encourage you to actually, you know, uh, do everything uh, through the uh, helpline because I think that way they have a log. And sometimes with my work, I'm tied up. So if I can't assist your needs immediately, uh, uh, Tracy and her team can find another volunteer like myself to connect you right away so you can continue those conversations that you are excited about. So I, uh, 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 Tracy, uh, anything else that you wanted to add before we can turn it over to the group here? Um, yes, I particularly loved the example of how much you're actually going to pay if you use credit cards um, versus paying cash. And it really makes you think, makes you stop and think before you use that credit card, if you're not able to pay it off. So actually, can you give us a little insight of um, how credit card use can be a good thing for your credits? Absolutely. Uh, and thanks for reminder. I should have spoke about that at the earlier slide. So think about that. Let's say let's say we are going for a shopping and we know exactly how much it's going to cost you, uh, and uh, we already have that money saved aside for that shopping or that particular expense, right? In that case, credit card can be one of the best choices. And I really hope you can uh, take an advantage of either cashback reward that many cards offer or a points reward. And one of those rewards that you can actually take an advantage, cash out uh, those reward uh, points. And then once the bill arrives for a credit card, you already have that money saved on the side for a specific expense that you already planned for, just paid off. As long as you are not carrying any balances, Great thing. You're going to love that. You're going to make. So how instead of the credit card companies gaming you, now you can game them. Easiest way to explain. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good example. Um, is, as long as um, you're being responsible and using the credit cards and paying them off, then they can be a good thing. So I, I really think that that's important. Um, the other thing that I think that we should address is now, there are situations, as you said, that are emergencies, like car repairs or something like that, um, that maybe we're just not prepared to, ha or we don't have the cash laying around for. So those would be, may be times when we take on debt. Um, but other than those times, and if we're still taking on a lot of debt, and, you know, let's look at the reason behind it. What behaviors are causing us to do this? Um, really take a deep dive into your finances um, and see, uh, are you going to Starbucks versus uh, buying your coffee at home? I don't know, just throwing that out there. Um, perhaps that's an area that might be causing you to bring on some extra debt that you don't even realize because maybe that $7 cup of coffee that you're buying at your favorite coffee shop is taking $7 away from paying some debt down. So looking at those behaviors and seeing what exactly is causing um, the, the debt, um, I think is a good thing. Do you have anything to add to that? 
assess? No, a perfect example, actually, because I think planning for, because if we do a small steps, we probably sometimes don't realize we are doing those habits, right? Maybe one cup of a coffee. Uh, uh, and my, my older daughter, she loved Starbucks and we did actually homework exactly for the same way. Uh, in those days, actually, the coffee for her was costing about $5.50 and the, the, the uh, Starbucks coffee she loved. And uh, we kind of added on her card, actually. So if you go to your credit cards uh, uh, website, you probably can actually uh, uh, you know, narrow it down by the uh, provider and then add up all the expenses. And she was surprised to see that she spent more than $400 in a year just for a cup of coffee to please herself. And that $400 could have bought her uh, uh, two months worth of groceries when she was living in an apartment by herself. Yeah. Now, this is a few years back. Groceries are not cheap anymore. But <laughs> No, but great example. Um, yeah, so, so those are the things I took away. I also wanted to mention last Wednesday, we did a budgeting uh, some, uh, workshop. So if, if anybody um, would like to go back and review that, it is recorded. We do record all of our workshops, um, our savvy sessions, so that you can go back and review. But and I think as Shesh would agree here, the key to everything is budgeting. Uh, budgeting and debt go hand in hand. Um, you can't, if, if you can't afford to buy something, you shouldn't buy it, but that doesn't mean that you can't in the future, you can plan. And I think that's exactly what as Shesh said when he was talking about, it's the planning is the key. You have to plan for those things. Um, and I think that's really important. So um, I would like to, open it up. You're welcome to put a question in the chat or uh, take yourself off mute. Do you have any specific questions regarding debt? Is there any terms that you need to find? i um, going to stop sharing my screen and that way I can see the chat better. So go ahead. You can take yourself off mute or put a question in the chat. Looks like um, there was a question regarding conversations regarding stocks and invest investments. Yes, we will. I am planning the year out for our 2023 savvy sessions, and those are 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 definitely topics that will be coming up. Any other questions? Yeah, so Paulina I has have a question. Can you hear ahead, me? I'm sorry. Deborah, yes. Um, I am. Definitely the person who he was talking about. I fit all the criteria, nothing missing. Um, so I've been really working hard on how I'm going to get myself out of all this financial debt that I put myself in. And one of the things that I wanted to close out some of my credit cards because I just got a whole lot of useless um, credit cards that got, like I got $300 credit lines that got a $100 yearly fee on top of 29.9, but I wanted to buy a house in the near future. And I was told that closing that out uh, could make it bad for me. Um, so I was wondering, can I roll those type of cards over into another credit card with like a zero percentage and get rid of some of all of that extra finance that I don't signed on for? Yes, actually, there are multiple questions, Deborah, but perfect, a perfect scenario. Thank you for asking us, and I'm sorry that you are in this uh, trouble. Uh, I mean, of course, not a trouble. Trouble means, but of course, financial uh, uh, case that you are referring to. So let, let's talk about multiple things. First of all, yes, closing credit cards may impact your uh, credit score. However, it depends on the longevity. So if the card has been open recently, it may not have as much of an impact than the long-term card. So if you look at the cards that you have, and you can also look on your uh, like you know, credit profile, some of the card might show the reporting as high as probably 15, 20, 30 years. Those are the cards you definitely want to keep because average credit life that you have on that reporting agency is higher because of that car. So those cars should never be closed. If you do have a balance, create a plan to pay that off. But the smaller cars may not uh, hurt as much, uh, but I would highly encourage because this might require actually specific case conversation. So if you can do budgeting on your uh, on a piece of paper and uh, wanted to reach me, we can do actually one on one, one session and I can assist you. Just you know, uh, go through savvy sessions uh, hotline and Tracy can connect uh, you and I together. 
Okay. Does that help? Uh, yes, uh, def definitely. What I don't have the hotline number. I will put that in the chat in just one second. Okay. You for you. Um, uh, while I'm doing that, so uh, I saw another question um, regarding the debt relief programs, and I, I'll just uh, take this one really quickly. If you go to um, some different, uh, there's uh, consumer credit counseling in those kind of places, um, our government resources, if you go to um, different, uh, I suggest you may know the name of the organizations, but there are federal government um, approved or recommended debt management companies. So you, you can you can look there. Um, but then it looks like, Ashesh, there's a question from Amy regarding lower percent loans to pay off credit cards. What about zero percent credit cards for 12 to 15 months? Yes, that is also best solution. As long as, as, long as we have a plan to pay off that zero percent in 15 months by the time it runs out. So if we are just moving balance from one to another card, it may not be the best outcome. But if you have a specific plan, let's say you owe uh, $1,500 on one of the card, which is charging 29%. In that case, you know, transfer it to the 0% option and then pay it off in those uh, uh, 15 month, 18 month time frame. And don't forget, anytime you move money from one to another card, they still do charge you about three to 4% fee for balance transfer fee. So it's not free. Uh, but at least, you know, a uh, 4% uh, payment on a 1500 is much better than 29%. Does that help, Amy? Great and, idea. And, and uh, I see another question. And, and of course, for the credit counseling, I just want you to uh, think about this. Anytime any company is charging you fee, you know, please be very careful about those because these credit counseling services are not sometimes what you may think about, right? If somebody proactively calls you and look for uh, uh, and found you uh, because you were looking for a credit counseling, they may not be as good as they might seem, okay? So be very careful before you trust them, search them on a better business bureau's website, do every homework before you open up your wallet and your uh, uh, personal information to them because that can do a lot more harm uh, than actually benefit. Exactly. And Mary, um, thanks for sharing uh, that nfcc.org, yes. Yes, perfect. Um, I do see a question regarding credit. We do have an upcoming credit workshop or savvy session that we will be doing um, uh, next month. Um, I believe it is the 15th of February. Uh, so when you see the email for that, go ahead and register for that. We're gonna do a deeper dive into what is credit. Um, so, uh, while we're while we're taking some additional questions at the beginning, I had asked you to put in chat the one word that came to mind when you feel or when you hear the word debit. Uh, debt, sorry. <laughs> um, let's see, has your word changed? If your word has changed, go ahead and put it in the chat. And while you do that, I'm going to answer Giselle's question because that's the one actually most recent question. I'm not trying to ignore other questions. We'll get to every one of them before we end. So uh, I have a car with $99 fee. Yes. So what happens is actually if you really didn't want to change that card and want to cancel because that eight years is a long time to help you average credit life increase. Uh, work with the, uh, the credit card company and tell them that either I close this card or you change this card into no annual fee. Now, when you do that, sometimes you might lose certain benefits. As long as you are willing to sacrifice those benefits, uh, it's okay to actually have that conversation. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, I, I'm very positive that the card company will uh, want to work with you because you are also a valued customer keeping that relationship for eight years. All right, let's see. I'm going to move up the chat here. Um, looks like we had a question on, I think we might have answered, but thoughts on handling over debt to a third party that negotiates deals with creditors on your behalf? I think that's where you were yeah. saying be careful. 
Yes, you have to be very, very careful. Please do not fall for it. I mean, they might promise everything. I can share a small example of working as a bank manager. When I was assisting a client, they thought that they are paying a third party. Third party never made a single penny payment to this creditor. So basically they paid in the bottomless pit and the money never went to the intended purpose. So now they lost the money as well as, uh, you know, the uh, credit is still at the same point that it started as. So please be very careful careful before you make any decision. So please vet everything thoroughly. Yes, definitely. Um, so here's a good one. Do you know of um, any resources for uh, people to look at what credit card might be best for them at whatever stage they are? At? It can be actually, and it's, it's not even like, it's very easy. First question I ask myself, what do I value most? If I'm looking for borrowing money temporarily for 0% interest, then that's the best card I have because I'm planning to pay this off before the promotional 0% runs out, right? So that will be the best card I would have. Now, if I think that, okay, I'm able to pay off those purchases that I put on a card because that's how I plan my life and I don't want to purchase anything on my card that I cannot pay off, then in that case, reward card will be one of the best choices. I personally believe cash is a king. You might come across, you know, the uh, airline mileage card. They're not bad, but what happened is actually the airlines and other card companies are in a much control over your future transactions because they might have a blackout period. They might have other uh, restrictions that you can't use your reward point. In the case of cash, what you see is what you get, right? So you can request those cash back if to pay off your existing uh, monthly payment or it's a pleasure for yourself that, hey, I made it. Those, that's, those are a great option. And I believe if you are looking into different credit cards, um, there are websites out there that will make some comparisons. Uh, so again, be careful what you're reading, make sure that it's from a reputable source, but there are some different financial organization, institutions that, that do compare different credit cards. So if you're looking for one with airline miles, or if you're looking one for cash back, uh, just remember this is, this is your your financial future and you, you want to protect yourself. Um, let's see, we have some new questions here. Um, I, I'm seeing some people updating their words. Um, uh, you know, it can be a freedom. We can see the light at the end of the tunnel, which is great. Um, before it was worry, now it's discipline. And, and that's that's right. So you own your financial future. No one else does. You do. So at the end of the day, it's what you do and what you do for yourself. So if you want to pay an extra $200 to have a $400 handbag and a pair of jeans, I think is what we said, then, you know, you own that decision. Um, if you own to have that extra $196 in your own pocket for your retirement, that's your decision. So, so at the end of the day, it is your decision and it, you can do it. There's there's a light at the end of the tunnel. There are solutions. Um, go ahead, Sashi, we're going to. Yeah, so I, uh, there are two additional questions, but thanks for that uh, rec uh, comment. So Credit Karma, can it be trusted? Uh, I mean, I personally use, uh, I was very skeptical when it came out. I waited three, four, maybe more than three, four years until I signed up. Uh, and I just wanted to make sure that, you know, nobody's selling my personal information uh, to uh, unknown people, uh, which I think, you know, I, I can attest to that, that I, I mean, I haven't seen anything bad happening from that. So I trust them personally, uh, but that doesn't mean you should trust directly just because I'm saying so. Just do your homework. Uh, there is one additional question. Uh, I have a 780 credit score, but I see fluctuating up and down slightly every month. Uh, but why, uh, and I'm top of my payment 100%. Uh, why is that happening? So uh, the credit score can change for a multitude of reasons. Uh, most of us know there are three credit agency reporting. Now, imagine that when you have a credit card uh, that you borrow money or temporarily use money, they report to these credit bureaus. Now, every time a financial institution report to the credit bureau, they pay a small fee. So not every company uh, report to every credit bureau. 
And that's why if you go from one to another credit bureau, the range of those uh, score differences could be even 30 or 40 uh, units, right? So that could be one of the reason because not reporting in every uh, place. Now, for credit score to fluctuate, it could be also depending upon your usage. So let's say if you are a very disciplined card user and you keep your card usage below 20%, but for any given month, it went a little over 20%, uh, and that might impact your uh, uh, credit score because now the card companies think that you're a little higher risk than before. So the card score at, or the overall score may go uh, below 780 sometime, but also it can go above 780 sometime, depending upon the usage. I hope this helps. Mm -hmm. A uh, question is, uh, why are credit uh, card companies allowed to charge such a high interest rate? Because you signed the agreement, <laughs> unfortunately, but we, we don't, and I don't read fine prints. I'm as, as much guilty as all of us probably on the phone, uh, you know, conversation here. But I can tell you the fine prints are too small for me to read and agree. And uh, at that point, I was just looking for some, some immediate relief. So I signed up. Now, what happens is why they are charging this much? Of course, there is a lot more mathematical formula and more to do with the risk. So if every individual who borrowed money on a credit card, everybody paid off without making any uh, uh, delay uh, in their agreement, then in that case, the card rate would not be as high as it is today. Probably half of it is, right? What happens is if percentage of the population is not paying, their a bargain, uh, then in that case, those who pay end up paying more, just like your insurance, right? So this is why uh, card companies charge higher interest uh, because they have so many unknown, because it's unsecured debt. Now, if you go back to my previous comments, home equity line of credit, they, they are secured debt. What happens in that case, that's why the rates are in a single digit, in most of the case between five and 7%, it is variable, but it is still better choice. I hope that answers. Okay, if you do not use your car enough, is that bad? So most of the time, I highly encourage you to make a one purchase, even a cup of coffee, not at Starbucks, maybe other place, maybe local coffee place, because that keeps your economy going. Because remember, those small business owners counting in our dollars, and I think they are the one working very hard than the Starbucks CEO. I mean, that's just my personal uh, way of saying. But anyway, those small business owner can be, uh, you know, a great resource for us to build your community uh, and maybe one cup of coffee a year at that place uh, is probably a good idea and then just pay it off so that way you don't forget because if you don't use the car usually you don't remember unless you are signing up for a paper statement which kind of reminds you to make a payment. 